Para Veterinary Worker, Wikipedia Article Audio Para Veterinary Workers are those people who assist a veterinary physician in the performance of their duties, or carry out animal health procedures autonomously as part of a veterinary care system. The job role varies throughout the world, and common titles include veterinary nurse, veterinary technician, veterinary assistant and veterinary technologist, and variants with the prefix of animal health. Nomenclature Veterinary nurse and technician Veterinary assistant History Role and responsibilities Education and qualification Specialty certification By country Global presence The scope of practice varies between countries, with some countries allowing suitably qualified para-veterinary workers a scope of autonomous practice, including minor surgery, whilst others restrict their workers to simple assisting of the veterinarian. In the majority of Anglophone countries, para-veterinary workers with a formal scope of practice, and a degree of autonomy in their role, are known as veterinary nurses. The primary exception to this is in North America, where both the United States and Canada refer to these workers as veterinary technicians or technologists. HTTP colon slash slash www dot NAVTA dot net slash page slash veterinary nurse. Human nursing associations have often claimed rights over the term nurse and in some countries, this is protected by law. This was the case in the United Kingdom until 1984, where veterinary nurses were referred to as registered animal nursing auxiliaries in line with the naming convention at the time for less qualified assistance in human nursing, called nursing auxiliaries. This is still the case in the United States, where the American Nursing Association and some state nursing associations have claimed proprietary rights to the term nurse. Some veterinary technicians argue that as they spend approximately 90% of their time performing nursing tasks, they should be allowed to use the title of veterinary nurse, like their counterparts in other countries. Some argue that this is especially valid as their skill set is often greater than their human nursing counterparts, with the addition of skills such as radiology, laboratory work, pharmacy, and more. Unofficially, many people refer to these workers as veterinary nurses in conversation, as it is a succinct description of the role. In most countries, a veterinary assistant is a person with fewer or no formal animal health qualifications, who has no autonomous practice, but who is designated to assist a vet and act under their direct instruction. Training programs are often workplace-based, and no formal license or certification is required to perform the role. Local laws may restrict what activities a veterinary assistant may perform, as some procedures may only be legally completed by a registered practitioner, such as a vet or a veterinary nurse. Veterinarians have had assistance from staff throughout their existence of the profession, but the first organized para-veterinary workers were the canine nurses trained by the Canine Nurses Institute in 1908 and announced in the magazine The Veterinary Student. According to the founder, they would carry out directions of the veterinary surgeon, meet a genuine need on the part of the dog owners, and at the same time provide a reasonably paid occupation for young women with a real liking for animals. In 1913, the Ruiz Lip Dog Sanatorium was founded, and employed nurses to care for unwell dogs and in the 1920s, at least one veterinary surgery in Mayfair employed qualified human nurses to tend the animals. In the mid-1930s, the early veterinary nurses approached the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons for official recognition, 
and in 1938 the Royal Veterinary College had a head nurse appointed, but the official recognition was not given until 1957, first as veterinary nurses, but changed within a year to Royal Animal Nursing Auxiliaries following objection from the human nursing profession. In 1951, the first formal para-veterinary role was created by the United States Air Force who introduced veterinary technicians, and this was followed in 1961 by a civilian program at the State University of New York Agricultural and Technical College. In 1965 Walter Collins, DVM received federal funding to develop model curricula for training technicians. He produced several guides over the next seven years, and for this work he is considered the father of veterinary technology in the United States. In 1984, the term veterinary nurse was formally restored to para-veterinary workers in the United Kingdom. 2. Veterinary technicians shall prevent and relieve the suffering of animals with competence and compassion. 3. Veterinary technicians shall remain competent through commitment to lifelong learning. 4. Veterinary technicians shall promote public health by assisting with the control of zoonotic diseases and educating the public about these diseases. 5. Veterinary technicians shall collaborate with other members of the veterinary medical profession in efforts to ensure quality health care services for all animals. 6. Veterinary technicians shall protect confidential information provided by clients, unless required by law or to protect public health. 7. Veterinary technicians shall assume accountability for individual professional actions and judgments. 8. Veterinary technicians shall safeguard the public and the profession against individuals deficient in professional competence or ethics. 9. Veterinary technicians shall assist with efforts to ensure conditions of employment consistent with the excellent care for animals. 10. Veterinary technicians shall uphold the laws regulations that apply to the technician's responsibilities as a member of the animal health care team. The scope of practice for para-veterinary workers varies by jurisdiction, and by qualification level. In some places, more than one grade of para-veterinary worker exists. For instance, in the United Kingdom there are both veterinary nurses, who are qualified professionals with a protected title, and veterinary assistants, who do not have a single level of qualification which they must attain, and whose title is not protected. Furthermore, job roles may be divided further into roles such as veterinary surgical technician, veterinary emergency and critical care technician, veterinary technician anesthesia specialist, etc. At the higher levels, veterinary nurses or technicians may be able to practice skills autonomously, including examinations and minor surgery on animals, without the direct supervision of a veterinarian. Para-veterinary workers are likely to assist the vet, or perform by themselves on behalf of the vet. Medical skills such as observations, wound and trauma management, physical interventions, and preparing and analyzing biological samples. Dependent on their scope of practice and training, they may also be called upon to operate diagnostic screening equipment, including electrocardiographic, radiographic and ultrasonographic instruments including complex machines such as computed tomography, magnetic resonance imagers and gamma cameras. In veterinary hospitals, veterinary technicians can perform complete blood counts, differential counts and morphologic examinations of blood. 
Para-veterinary workers would commonly assist veterinarians in surgery by providing correct equipment and instruments and by assuring that monitoring and support equipment are in good working condition. They may also maintain treatment records and inventory of all pharmaceuticals, equipment, and supplies, and help with other administrative tasks within a veterinary practice such as client education. Client education plays a key role of the veterinary technician's responsibilities to effectively communicate sometimes complex medical instructions in a positive and understandable way, and to facilitate the patient's care as an intermediary between the doctor, hospital, and the patient. In this way, open lines of communication are established that can benefit the patient and hospital. The level of education of a para-veterinary worker will depend on the role they are performing, and the veterinary medical legal framework for the area in which they are working. Many areas employ veterinary assistants, who have a simple role to directly assist the vet under direction, and may hold no formal qualification or training, or have been trained on the job. Higher level para-veterinary workers such as veterinary nurses, veterinary technicians or veterinary technologists, who have a scope of autonomous practice which they are expected to perform without instruction, are likely to have both formal qualifications and in many jurisdictions will also require a formal registration with a monitoring body. In countries where the role of para-veterinary workers is most advanced, the qualification required is likely to be based in higher education, such as in the United States or Canada where veterinary technicians must normally gain an associate degree at an institution recognized by the American Veterinary Medical Association or Canadian Veterinary Medical Association, and can choose to study for an extended period to gain a bachelor's degree, or the United Kingdom, where veterinary nurses enter. The profession through either a two-year diploma program or through completion of a foundation degree or honors degree. In almost all cases, regardless of the level of formalized training, a high level of practical experience is usually required prior to a student being fully qualified, which may be completed as part of their course, or during a post-qualification period. This may require maintenance of a log of all work completed, which may need to be signed by a supervising professional to indicate competence. In some cases, such as in the United States, video records may be required of some procedures, which may then be examined by the awarding or registration body. Many countries including the United Kingdom, Canada, and parts of the United States, restrict some elements of practice, and may restrict use of the recognized name, to those people currently registered with an appropriate licensing body, meaning that it would be illegal for any person not on the register to represent themselves as a para-veterinary worker, or to perform some of the procedures that a licensed professional could. The precise details of these restrictions vary widely between legal areas, and neighboring areas may have different policies, as is the case in the various states of the U.S. This licensing body may have its own requirements for maintaining a registration, and those who hold the requisite academic qualification may still have to complete a further range of exams or tests to become registered. For instance, in the United States, most areas use the Veterinary Technician National Exam, and this will be used by the state licensing authority to qualify an applicant to become a registered veterinary technician. In some cases, those people who qualified before the introduction of formal academic qualification requirements may still be working as para-veterinary workers and may still be entered on a required register through the use of grandfather rights. For instance, in some states of the U.S., people with a set number of years or hours of experience assisting a veterinarian could sit for the Veterinary Technician National Exam, 
however this route was phased out in 2011, and future candidates must have an academic qualification. Beyond credentialing as a veterinary technician specialty certification is also available to technicians with advanced skills. To date there are specialty recognitions in emergency and critical care, anesthesiology, dentistry, small animal internal medicine, large animal internal medicine, cardiology, oncology, neurology, zoological medicine, equine veterinary nursing, surgery, behavior, nutrition, clinical practice and clinical pathology. Veterinary technician specialists carry the additional post-nominal letters VTS with their particular specialties indicated in parentheses. As veterinary technology evolves more specialty academy recognitions are anticipated. Attempts at professional solidarity resulted in the creation of the International Veterinary Nurses and Technicians Association in 1993. Its members currently include Australia, Canada, Ireland, Japan, Malta, Nepal, New Zealand, Norway, Pakistan, Spain, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. In 2007 the Accreditation Committee for Veterinary Nurse Education was established in an attempt to standardize veterinary technology education throughout the European Union and to allow movement of veterinary nurses educated in one member nation to employment in another. On the specialty front, the Swiss-based organization VASTA is a six-module year-long program that is approved by the Association of Veterinary Anesthetists the European College of Veterinary Anesthesia and Analgesia, the International Veterinary Academy of Pain Management, and that has applied for race approval in the United States. Its instructors include diplomates of the ECVAT, nurse anesthetists from the human medical field, neurologists, and veterinary physical therapists. It is currently offered in Germany, Austria, and the German-speaking regions of Switzerland. It has previously been offered in the French-speaking region of Switzerland but is currently on hiatus there due to low participation. Courses are planned for the US and the UK in 2012. Successful completion of the course results in the awarding of the post-nominal letters VAT.